basically, <laughs> nature is holding up a ruler. We know how big each of those hot and cold spots are. The size of the hot and cold spots are, you know, the universe is about 400,000 years old. They are 400,000 light years across. So nature holds up this ruler for us, and then we can measure. 400,000 years old then. Then, right. We know, so we know how big it was then. We know how light has propagated from there to here. So we could figure out the geometry of the universe. Now, we're used to thinking about, well, what's the geometry of the universe? It's easier to think about this in two dimensions. We could, we're used to thinking about, we could think about the geometry of a two-dimensional surface. Let's start on the top with a sphere. The Earth is a sphere. We know that if you go from here to London, to Tokyo, and back, and draw that triangle on the Earth, the sum of the angles of that triangle is greater than 180 degrees, that the Earth is positively curved. Try the same thing on a flat piece of paper. The flat piece of paper, what they taught us, and if most of you, if, if those of you who like me grew up in New York State and you took your region's geometry test, <laughs> you learned that the sum of the angles of a triangle was 180 degrees. And that's true on a flat piece of paper. If you took a piece of paper that and curved it like that saddle shape, the sum of the angles is less than 180 degrees. So those are three different geometries, positively curved, negatively curved, and flat. Now to understand how to, what those geometries tell us about the composition of the universe, I need to teach you general relativity. <laughs> but don't worry. Have a little time. <laughs> it consists of two ideas. Matter tells space how to curve, and the curvature of space tells matter and light how to move. So that means once you tell me how much matter there is, if there's a lot of matter, space is positively curved. If there's very little matter, space is negatively curved. In the Goldilocks universe, <laughs> that's just right, the curvature of space is zero, the total energy of the universe is zero, the uh, geometry that we learned in high school works not just on a piece of paper, it works on the scale of the physical universe. That final case was the one that many theorists liked, because it was a total energy zero case. Before the CMB results came out, most people thought, well, and supernova results, the universe should be negatively curved. We add up the matter and galaxies. The matter and galaxies wasn't enough to make the universe flat. It didn't have this magic Goldilocks density. A lot of theorists, Lawrence was one, many others advocated that probably the universe ought to be flat, that you ought to be dark energy in the universe. But the observers looking at galaxies didn't see it. So one of the key parts of the story was looking at those microwave background fluctuations. And actually, before those boomerang results, there was a PhD thesis published <laughs> in the journal by Amber with her advisor, Lyman, that measured the size of those spots first and was really the first experiment to show that the geometry looked like it was flat. So now we know we live in a flat universe to an accuracy of what percent? So now we know that, it's, we know that to the accuracy of better than a percent based on our current data. So that you know, the universe seems to be just right. Their destination and How do you feel? And this message journey, it all depends in a basket. Would you like for everybody to join in?